Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to 101 Talks with Seb. I pray everyone had a great day on today. We thank God for letting us see the last week in February. The last week in February. We give all praises unto God who's the head of my life. I pray and thank God for his many continued blessings upon me. I'm here today. I'm standing here today because of God's grace and his mercy. And I thank him on tonight. So tonight, I'm going to get into the subject is on submission. It's on submission. So I'm going to read um, the definition of submit. Submit. Accept or yield to a superior force or to the authority or will of another person. Again, submit. The definition is accept or yield to a superior force or to the authority or will of another person subject to a particular process, treatment, or condition. Another um, definition, subject to a particular process, treatment, or condition. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all thine heart, and lean not to own, and lean not on unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. That is so true. That is so true. I've learned in my submission to God, I have to acknowledge him in all that I do and all that I am doing on this earth. I have to acknowledge him first for me to move forward in his perfect will for my life. We have to trust God enough and know that he will not lead you astray. It's all about trusting God, seeking him. We have to trust God enough and know that he will not lead you astray. He won't lead you astray. He won't ever lead you wrong. We submit to God because we love God. In your walk, in your daily walk with Christ, you should submit to God because you love him. He is your first love. Like like I was about to say, he, we love God because he first loved us. I love him because he first loved me. We yield to him because he loved, because we love him. God is love. Christ submitted himself to death for you and I. For you and I. Those of you that's viewing on tonight, Christ submitted himself to death for you and I. So we might live so we might can live uh, a free life of sin. Yes, we were born in sin, shaking in shape in iniquity, but once we cross over and yield ourselves to him, give our whole our mind, body, and soul to him. He'll set us free. He will set you free. Christ submitted himself to death for you and I so that we can have this wonderful new life with him. Glorious life, eternal life. Even after death, we'll have eternal life with him. So in submission... Our will are naturally selfish. We want to do what we want to do. That's our flesh. Our flesh dwelleth no good things. So that being said, we, our flesh is naturally selfish. It wants what it wants. It wants what it wants. <laughs> it lo Our flesh loves to have its own way. But listen to this. It's not easy to submit to the will of to the will of another unless there is some strong motive that impels us to submission. 
Let me read that again. It's not easy to submit to the will of another unless there is some strong motive that impels us to submission. God demands submission from us. He wants us to submit to him. It's all about him. God wants us to submit to him. He has all power and power belongs to him. God's will is never selfish. His will is never selfish, but always benevolent. Always benevolent. When God demands us to submit our will to him, he is doing that which is best for us. We have to believe that his perfect plan for us is what's best for us. When God demands us to submit our will to him, he is doing that which is best for us, for me and you. As long as we go ahead and submit, we know that his perfect plan is is, is greater than our plans. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts and the plans that I have towards you, said the thoughts of peace, not to give you thoughts of peace and not evil, not of evil, but to give you an expected end. <laughs> that's what the words, that's what he said. Submitting to God is often the hardest of all tasks, yet it's the most necessary. Submitting to God is often the hardest of all tasks, yet it's the most necessary necessary i would have to say yes because see me knowing i know me so it's just like i feel like i have to be well then back then which is a few years ago i felt like i had to be in control i had to uh, i need to do this and i gotta do this and I, and i said lord <laughs> uh, uh i can't keep living like this i'm in, going in cycles just going in cycles I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me. You are going to have to help me because I'm. you're the only one that can help me. I feel like I got to be in control. I feel like I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to have, I got to make sure it is right. Uh-uh. Driving myself insane. But I had to stop and think. I said, I, like I said, I had to stop and think. I had to say, Lord, you're going to have to help me. Not nobody else. You're going to have to help seven of Jones, seven. You're gonna to have to have to help your daughter, seven Jones, because I mean. But guess what, guys? Guess what? As soon as I let go of my will, and I said, "Lord, let your will be done in my life," do you not know how much peace and contentment that came with that? I was no longer going in cycles. I was no longer saying, oh, I got to do this. I got just wearing, just can't, couldn't even sleep at night because I just had so much. I felt like I had to do, almost, it was an anxiety, it's anxiety almost. Every day, every night, just saying, oh, man, I got to do this. I got to have this. Oh, I don't know how this going to happen. I don't know how to make this happen. And I just said, Lord, let me stop it. And submit everything to you. Every area of my life. Every area of my life. I have to submit it to you. And what I, and I promise you, until this day, you all, my life never has been the same. I can go to bed at night. I don't have to go to bed at night wondering about this, that, and the other. I can wake up every morning and know that God has the master's plan. He has my future, he holds my future. So I can't worry about the future. I have to just worry about today that the Lord has given me. Submit to God is often the hardest of all tests, yet it's the most necessary. It's, it's very necessary. Submission to God is the one necessary thing in order to enjoy the Christian life. Submission to God is the one necessary thing in order to enjoy the Christian life. Once we get up, it, once we give up our will and submit to God's will, 
It's not easy. We're going to go through some things. We're going to go through troubles and trials in this life. But once we give it up and give it to him, we will be able to go through these things in life a little, a little easier, knowing that he has it all, knowing that he never sleeps or slumber, knowing that he has it all under control. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's finances, uh, family issues, health issues. Know that God has it all under control. Or you probably, or you may be wondering, well, Lord, oh, why did you even let this? <clears throat> you let my uh, family member die from COVID. You let this, that. Just say, Lord, yes, I may be questioning you. But I need you to help me to get through this day. Well, I didn't think this was going to go the way it did, but it 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 just went. It just happened, and now I'm just broken. Say, Lord, I need your help. Hallelujah. I need your help in this everyday life. I need your help. The more fully we are submitted to his will, the more cheerfully we can carry it out and the, and the sweeter and richer will be the joy of doing it. The more fully we are submitted to his will, the more cheerfully we can carry it out and the sweeter and richer will be the joy of doing it. Doing it. That's so true. Reluctant. Submission to God is not real submission. Being reluctant to submission to God is not real submission. It's not, okay, so what if, if you're submitting to God and just like, okay, Lord, I'm just going to submit to you because I want you to do this for me. Or I've been praying about this thing and I feel like if, if I just go on ahead and just uh, seek you and just read, your, read my Bible and do this and do this for a couple of days, then you'll come through for me, and then that's all I'm going to do. No. Uh-uh. This is an everyday submission. It's the everyday submission. You have to renew. The Bible says, be re transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to renew, be renewed in him. Each day he brings new mercies every day. Every morning there's new mercies. You have to ask him, Lord, Help me. I want to stay on the straight and narrow path with you. I can't worry about so-and-so. I got to worry about me. I want to be submitted to you wholeheartedly. I don't want to have to do anything. If I'm not going to serve you wholeheartedly, why, why should you know? Why should I even try? I want to make sure I serve him wholeheartedly. And everything I do, I don't care what it is, my job, I, uh, just in serving every day, uh, his people, my parents, or my parent rather, my mother, I have to make sure the home comes first. I have to make sure I'm doing what I need to do for her. The Bible says, honor your mother and father for your days will be longer. You have to honor. You have to be able to have a submitted heart. It's all about not my will, Lord, but your will. Okay, I'm not feeling like this. I'm not feeling like this, or I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling this submission thing. You have to ask him to help you. You want to be. I had to ask him to help me. I want to be. I want to have control of every area of my life. I want to do it. I want to say, well, I'm gonna do it like this. Okay, this area of my life, I'm gonna fix it to where this may happen. Or I'm gonna do this this amount of days, and then maybe something will happen. Uh uh. You have you have to do it. Anything you do, you have to do it wholeheartedly. The essence of sacrifice of self is the sacrifice of the will. The essence of sacrifice of self is the sacrifice of the will. The nobility of both the inner and the outer life comes from submission to and, 
in cooperation with God. True nobility of both the inner and the outer life comes from submission to, to and cooperation with God. The nature of our relations with God depends upon the extent of our submission to him. That is so true. The nature of our relations with God depends upon the extent of our submission to him. How 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 are we being committed? How are we, how are we submitting to Him? What are we doing in our everyday lives to submit to God? If you haven't started, start tonight by saying a simple prayer: Lord, help me, clean me, make my heart pure, cleanse me from the inside out. Lord, I need you to help me. I want to be whole. I want to be committed to you, wholeheartedly. Mind, body, and soul. I want to be all the way cleansed. Let your march, let your march start. Let March start out a whole new way. Let it start out. You should make March and say, Lord, I'm just gonna be submitted to you. Whatever you have to do to get me to you, closer to you, do it, Lord. If you have to pull away friends. You have to pull away relationships. You have to pull me away from family members. Lord, I just want to be submitted to you because I don't know when my time is going to come and you call me home. I just want to be ready. I just want to be submitted to you. This is well illustrated in the relation of husband and wife. Okay, let me read that again. The nobility <laughs> of both the inner and the outer life comes from submission to and cooperation with God. The nature of our relations with God depends upon the extent of our submission to him. To add to that, this is well illustrated in the relation of husband and wife. This is true. When two marry and there's no merging of the wills and purposes, but each relation's his or her individually, standing apart from the other in wish and desire, in choosing and willing, their union can never be a happy one. Okay. They must yield themselves to each other. That's, that's another whole subject for another whole day. Marriage. <laughs> When you come together with the individual, it's not about you anymore. You have to submit. Us women have to submit to our husbands. And you're not, when you come together with an individual, it's about you too. <laughs> Y'all like this. So, you have a purpose in life, and he has a purpose in life. So, when y'all come together, y'all have to fulfill each other's purposes according to what God wants you all to do together. That's all what marriage is. It's, 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 it's purpose. It's all about God's kingdom. It's, that's why it's so important to pray and fast and know who you're marrying because it's all according to God's plan, and it has to do with a lot with coming together and fulfill the plan of God for the kingdom of God. It's very important. It's very crucial. So it's like <clears throat> you have you are, you your own individual person, and you and he has his own. He's, he is his own individual person. So if y'all not willing to come together and, and talk about you all's purposes and, and wills and, and what you all have to do pertaining to God together, then it, it's just not going to work. Y'all have to come together. Y'all are a team. Y'all are a partner, are a partnership. Y'all have to come together. And 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 with and God is the center. God is that's why it's so important. 
to make sure that God is the head. God is the head. The man follows God. That's why it's so important, single ladies, I'm talking to myself as well, or those of you that desire to be married, it's important that he has a strong relationship with God. It's so important. So important. Because how are you supposed to submit to him and he don't even have a relationship with God? So you just following somebody who just don't even have a level head. He just all over the place. An unstable, what the word says, an, an um a double a double minded is unstable in all his ways. A double a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. He has to be submitted to God. That's his first love. If he can't get to God, then he can't get to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> their, their relationship has to be. That's important. The relationship has to be like this. Him and God. Because uh, if he can't get to God, if he's not in God's presence, if he can't, mm -mm, he can't get to me. Sorry. It's a no. But uh, that's another whole subject. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to read this over. This is well illustrated, and I can go on and on and on, but I'm mistaken. <laughs> this is well illustrated in the relation of husband and wife. When two marry, and there's no merging of the wills and purposes, but each relation is his or her individually, standing apart from the other in in wish and desire, in choosing and willing, their union can never be a happy one. They must yield themselves to each other. It's all about merging. Marriage. Merging. You're going to be merging together. Two individuals merging together. In the scriptures, Christ is represented as being the husband of the church. And the church is known as the, as the bride. The church is taught to submit to him as a wife should submit to their husband. This is true. The wife submits to her husband because she loves him, right? The submission that comes from love and is the willing response of love is the source of the deepest and truest, truest happiness that can, that can come from human sources. Ephesians 5.22 it talks about Christ and submission and uh, Ephesians 5, 22. When you have time, look that up. It talks about the wife submitting to the husband in Ephesians 5, 5, 22. But it's that same love. God is love. In the same way, the submission to God, which is acceptable to him and must be based upon love. In the same way, the submission to God, which is, which is acceptable to him and must be based upon love. Because God is love. So if we don't love God, how are we supposed to love ourselves? If we don't love God, <laughs> he's the ones, God is the one that's going to, Show you how to love yourself because he is love. I think I kind of jumped on that on last week. Uh, God's love never fails. His love never fails. Oh, yeah, Valentine's Day. God's love, God's love never fails. It has never failed me yet. That's how I know. That's why I know today that um i know how to be loved i know how to be treated because god is love and he doesn't it, his love is 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 i can't even explain it it's not even explainable because his love is just so pure it's so pure <clears throat> it's so pure and gentle and kind and and and, and just so lord it's just awesome. It's just so awesome. I'm not going to cry. It's just so, like I said, it's just so pure. It don't force me to do any wrongdoings. Anything, it don't force me to do anything I don't want to do. 
It, even when I do wrong and I don't even know that I'm doing wrong. His love draws me back to him. Come on, somebody. His love draws me back to him. Because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I know now. I didn't know then, but I know now. Only the, tr only the truly submitted heart can fathom the love of God. That's what I just said. His love is undescribable. It's in an unexplainable. I just know it is pure. It is holy. It it takes wrong of no wrong. It uh takes no thought of no wrongdoings. On the truly submitted heart can fathom the love of God. When he died on the cross for you and I, that's where his love started. Right there on that cross. And then he rose so that so that you and I can see him see him again. In in uh in the res uh when he comes back for his people without spot or wrinkle, he rose so that he can live inside of you. So that you can walk this on this earth and be able to love people wholeheartedly and not just do people no any kind of way. Where is the love? Where is the love? Only the true submitted heart can fathom the love of God or can love God with that self-enriching love which inspires devotion and causes us to delight. Let me read that again. I was reading too fast. Only the truly submitted heart can fathom the love of God or can love God with that self-enriching love which inspires devotion and causes us to delight in God, when we love, it is easy to obey. It is easy to submit. This is true. When we love, for real, for real, it is easy to obey and it is easy to submit. So you shouldn't have no problem submitting if you truly love. We must submit to God in faith. We have to have faith to move forward in life. We have to have that faith. That's what God is looking for, faith. He's like, daughter, son, where's your faith? In me. We must submit to God in faith because sometimes we're not going to always, uh, sometimes we're not going to always, how can I put this? Sometimes we're going to ask questions. Sometimes we're going to be like, well, um, okay, I just thought that it was going to go this way since I finally said, you know, well, I thought that um, I didn't know I was going to be treated that way. But when we, But when we submit to God, we have to submit to God in faith, in faith. To know that he's going to carry us through to the next level in our lives. To the next dimension in him. We must submit to God in faith. Because he's the only one that's, go that's going to hold us. Complete us. The only person. When we submit, we are going to have questions. Like I said, we're going to have questions. We're going to say, okay. We're going to ask questions. We're human. We're going to ask questions. But all in all, he takes care of his children. But all in all, he takes care of his children. He truly does. We have to know that his plan is what's best for our lives. The outcome that some of us had in the past three years, four years, five years, six years, even 10, 15, 20 30 years, the outcomes that we have had in our lives, some of us has been, have gone through some stuff. I mean, some stuff. But you know what? It's his plan that overrides what we think should happen. It's his plan. And as long as we submit to him, things are going to happen. 
things are going to happen. We just have to put our trust in him to know that he's going to carry us through each and every trial that we go through in this life. Here's some scriptures I'm going to leave you all with on tonight. Deuteronomy 7 and 9, talking about submission, all these scriptures. Proverbs 15 and 33, Psalms 40 and 8, 40 and 8 Matthew 6 and 10, Romans 12 and 2, Hebrews 13 and 21, James 4 and 7, Ephesians 5 and 21, 1 Peter 5 and 6, and Ephesians 5 and 22. Too. I'm going to read those scriptures again slowly so that you all could get them and write them down if you would like. Deuteronomy 7 and 9. Proverbs 15 and 33. Psalms 40, 40 and 8. Matthew 6 and 10. Romans 12 and 2. Hebrews 13 and 21, James 4 and 7, Ephesians 5 and 21, 1 Peter 5 and 6, and Ephesians 5 and 22. Everyone submits to someone, married or not. We all have to submit to someone, married or not. We have to. That's just how things go. We have to submit to something or someone. So, <clears throat> let's start by submitting to God first. And let's see how everything else plays out in our lives. Let's start with that first. What I had to do it. I had to say, Lord, help me. And I promise you, you all, I've had so much peace and contentment in my life. When I finally said, Lord, I submit my whole life to you. Everything. Everything. Everything God has commanded is designed to bring him honor and, bring, and to bring us joy. Everything God has commanded is designed to bring him honor. And to bring us joy. God created marriage. He sure did. And it bring and it suppose and it not suppose it honors marriage honors him and it brings him joy. <clears throat> because he's the perfect example. He's the husband. We, the church is the bride. So we supposed to submit. It's a, I love how the scriptures uh, talks about Christ as being the representation of the husband of the church. And the church is known as the bride. That is awesome. I mean, it's absolutely all, the The Bible speaks about it. I mean, perfect example. Christ is an example of how a godly marriage should, should, should go. Uh, everything God has commanded is designed to bring him honor and to bring us joy. Everything. You are you breathing and alive and here on today brings God joy, brings joy to God. Because he created you. And all he wants you to do is submit to him, to submit to him. Let him know that you love him by getting in by getting in his word, praying, fasting, leaning on him, and let him know that, talk to him about everything. I've learned to talk to God about everything. When I mean everything, everything. And he never disappoints, never. Following his commands and receiving his love, including the love he gives through a husband, will not always be easy. Our sin continually gets in the way, but God has shown us it is good and it is for our good. It's not easy. It is not easy. But loving him and letting him lead and guide us is all it's about. 
letting him lead uh, lead uh, lead you and guide you into all truth is a blessing. It will be a blessing. It's going to forever be a blessing because it blesses me each and every day I wake up. It, it, it blesses me. And as a single woman, my submission to God shapes my view of submission to my future husband. Again, as a single woman, my submission to God shapes my view of submission to my future husband. So how I'm submitted to God, how he shows love towards me, how our relationship is set up. I know that that's how I'm supposed to submit to my future husband. And he's supposed to love me. Not down talk me. Not all this stuff. Not play me weak. Any of that stuff. I'm God's child. I'm God's daughter. I'm the daughter of the king of kings. So I should be treated as such. <laughs> I should be treated as such. I'm the daughter of the king of kings. And when I started to change my mindset about how, how I view me, that's what, that's what has helped me. In these past three years, I had to get in God's word and see what he, what he said about me. And, I, and that changed my whole perspective of, on how I saw myself. So plenty of years, just about all through my teenage years, up in my mid twenties, I seen myself as, oh, I don't know, I don't know about this, and I'm not good enough, or I'm too thin, or I'm too this, I'm too. I just was like, oh, just too much. But once I really said, Lord, I need your help. I want to be submitted to you. Submitted. I want to be committed. I want to do your will. I want your will to be done in my life because I'm tired of these cycles. I've been going up, going up. All these cycles and cycles each year, same stuff. I'm dealing with the same stuff, attracting the same people because I wasn't happy with myself. I wasn't happy with myself. So I had said, God, I'm just going to step, I'm just going to leave all my little flaws and all and just leave it on the floor. And I'm just going to submit to you. I'm just going to get on my knees and submit to you because uh, it ain't nothing else I can do. And once I start talking to God, praying, fasting, asking him to help me, I mean, the way I view myself now is, is, is like I feel like I'm a part of a royalty. Like, I'm not going to cry, but I mean, the way I view myself, it's like for so long that I have, I viewed myself as I'm not this and I'm not that. I mean, I have a long story. I have to share that story later. But I mean, I just view myself as, uh, I'm part of a royal, I'm part of a royal family. God is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So I'm his daughter, right? So I, 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 that's how I treat myself. I'm a princess. I'm a queen. And that's how I should be treated. And I treat myself as such. I treat my own self as such. I'm part of a royal, I'm part of a royal family. Even growing up, I had a very great relationship with my parents. Uh, my dad uh, passed away back in 2017. Even with that, even with that, it's just like the Lord has really transformed my mind. And he had to show me that, your, yes, your dad is gone. Your father is gone physically. But I'm your, I'm your spiritual father. <laughs> and what makes you think, you don't think you're going to, you've been taking, you, you have been taken care of all these years, all your, all these years. Even up until now, and you think since your father is gone, you think that uh, you're not going to be taken care of? <laughs> when I tell you the Lord has been coming through for me, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. And the way he has transformed my mind, I mean, it's just, 
I have no words because when I got in his word, I, I said, oh, okay, that's how it is. That's how I am. Okay, I'm a, I'm a part of a royal generation, a royal priesthood. I don't have to walk around with my head hung down. I don't have to walk around and think I'm not good enough. I don't have to walk around comparing myself to other women. I have I, What I do now, I encourage other women and say, hey, you're God's daughter too. Let's, let's, let's encourage e each other. I thank God for the, uh, the young women. And, uh, I thank God for the friends that the Lord has put in my life to even encourage me. I mean, in the past, I don't know, five to 10 years, I mean, five, 10 years, I'm just thankful to even encourage me and I'm encourage them in the Lord. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's amazing. And I see my life transforming each and every day into greater and greater heights in him. Like I said in my last video, um, I, I didn't want this to be about uh, me desiring a husband or anything, but I just wanted to encourage the singles. Seriously, single women who desire to be married or those of you uh, that don't desire marriage. My submission to God shapes my view of submission to my future husband or, or my submission to God shapes my view of submission to anything that he wants me to be submitted to. I can be submitted to in love because God is love. I mean, it's just... It's a it's a complete cycle. It all goes back to God and what he wants. It's all about his will. It's not about my will. I said, like I said, three, I said, Lord, three years ago, I said, Lord, your will be done in my life. Not my will, but your will be done. And once his will started to be done in my life, I said, oh, okay. I said, Lord, because it's funny because I said, Lord, I'm not going to do X, Y, and Z anymore. I'm done doing that. I'm done. <laughs> With that type of, um, I don't want to be a part of that anymore. But he sure set it up to where he put me right in it, right on time. And he has blessed me tremendously. And I just feel the blessings each and every day. Man, it's a whole testimony, you all. It's a whole testimony. But, I mean, I'm just so thankful on today uh, for where he has brought me. He's brought me from a mighty long way. And I'm just so thankful on today. 28 years old. And loving me. Because God loves. Because I know how God. God. I know how God has shown. His love towards me. He has represented his love towards me. And now since I submitted to him. It's just awesome. Every day is not perfect now. I'm not perfect. I'm still human. I still mess up. But that's why I go to him to, and say, Father, forgive me. I don't know what I've done. I've done something today that I probably don't even know if it's a sin or not. But I've done it and I need some help. <laughs> I'm not trying to do it, but I just need some help. I might have said something wrong to somebody. <laughs> I don't cuss. But I might have said something wrong in the ugly tone, and that's not me. Lord, forgive me. I don't want to wrong anybody. I don't want to do. I want to. I don't want to make anybody feel like. Uh, I just have a nasty attitude. That's not me. I'm supposed to come off with love, love, joy, gentleness, just the fruits of the spirit. That's it. It all correlates together. That's all I had on tonight. I pray that you all have had a great day. I pray that you all have get. I pray that you all have gotten something out of this on tonight's submission. Submission. That's that was my subject on tonight. Uh, we thank and praise God on today for all that He's doing and all He's going to do in our lives. We thank Him for letting him, letting us see the rest of the week. Um, 
we thank him for letting us go into the rest of the week with a clear mind, with a clear conscience. And we thank him for letting us see new mercies. We thank him for all that he's going to do in our lives. This is going to be the third. It's next week starts the third month of the year, March. We still have time, guys. Something. But you know what? You can start off March <laughs> by submitting to God and saying, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done in my life. It's not about me. It's about you. <laughs> So that's all I have on tonight. Um, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel, One on One Talk for Self on Monday nights. And uh, bring a friend, share my videos. I would love that. Uh, it's to encourage and inspire you all to move closer, to uh, grow closer to Christ. Because he's coming back sooner than we expect. And so, uh, I pray that these videos are encouraging and inspiring you to go closer to God. All right, well, I, that's all I have on tonight, and I will see you all on next Monday night. Be blessed, you all.